Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Same. And thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. You all remember that I brought a video here about Fanida talking about how they are being underpaid as a black content creator and all that. And since then, she has also, I think, I don't know what got, really got her upset, but she really has been very upset with a lot of also content creators that she started calling people out and also saying some not nice words, especially to her followers and all that. And you all know her followers, uh, she has a lot of black following and all that. And then she went on a rant and how there was a time she had nothing to eat. She was a hood rat and she has to borrow this and all that. Why are people not being happy for her? I don't think anybody's uh, unhappy for you, but just how you speak to people or how you disrespect people or how you come out on the internet to talk. And I want you to know that as you keep growing as a content creator, you are making money. I hope you are also saving for the rainy days, right? And I want you to know that there are so many people around you that do not really do mean well for you but they are there because you are getting out the bag you are like you know sending them on vacation doing what a friend could do for their friends and the rest of it why she was also having this problem going back and forth on the internet uh, I mean, it's quite unfortunate that her team, nobody was able to get her to keep her phone down for a period of time. But then she's always out there talking about her friends and the rest of it. Then let's talk about this. One of the friends that she also posted actually came out to say that I hope you all know that every anything on the Internet is not real. That tells a whole lot. Let's get into since I woke up to tea about the pay gaps and the pay disparities among black creators and white creators, let me add on to it because I didn't really even say what I wanted to say. You saying y'all made me coming back because some of y'all is pocket watching me too hard. Look at the robe. Pockets is flush. Asia does what she needs to fucking do. I gets to the bag. I gets to the manyan. We're already six figures in and it's only May. <laughs> well over. Not too much. Get out my pockets. And that's doing what we can do, even though they roll blocking us. Now, I'm going to have to call out a few creators so y'all can really, y'all can really understand what the fuck I'm talking about. Because ain't no, ain't no other big, big creators going to put a name on it. But I'm sorry, girl. I got to whack you. I'm not trying to read you. But Alex Earl, come to the podium. Alex Earl has the luxury of being able to have white fucking privilege. Imagine a black girl comes online and says she has a dress with throw up in it. She's nasty as fuck. Look at how y'all talk about E. Kane. E. Kane and Alex Earl are, are twins. Twin flames. But what is Alex and what is E. Kane? What, what, is, what is Alex and what is me? Me and Alex, me and Alex engage me pretty much the same damn shit. And I'm more entertaining. And I have a podcast. And, 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 and I'm funny. Alex is funny to white people, or is she even funny? And this is not this is not a drag, Alex. I'm not trying to drag you. I'm just keeping it fucking real. Because if you could get 50k for a brand deal, bitch, we both know I deserve it. 60k, 70k, 80k. You know what I'm saying? I'm having to settle right now for my little funky ass 20. But I want what you white hoes get, and I want it. I want it to. I want it today, ASAP, not tomorrow. Prada, I spent six thousand in your store. I better be receiving some gifting, like y'all do every other white hoe that don't purchase shit from y'all. I need a small bottle of perfume or something for France, if you don't mind. You know what I'm saying? It's hard having to be the one to talk the shit all the time and, 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 and say the quiet parts out loud while somebody's got to do it. And now that I have my new titties, I will be more than willing. Alex, girl, I'm not trying to drag you. That's not even a read. It's not your fault that you're white. Opportunities come, come better to white people, and that's just how the, the country was built. You know what I'm saying? It's, just, it's systemic. I'm not, hating that you get, I'm not hating that you get to the money, young girl. I'm just saying I need it fair across the board, or I'm going to start being mediocre like you white hoes. <laughs> because if I take away popular sounds, half you hoes ain't got a fucking account. Don't let me wake it up. And I'm not trying to be rude and I'm not trying to be nasty. And if you think I am, then dance your way into my DMs and let's tussle if you feel hit. Period. And we all know that I'm the baddest. Gag it. Hi. Um, I don't really like being vulnerable and telling y'all my business, but for the sake of everything i i'm here to talk i'm not here to give an apology to my haters though y'all gonna have to keep waiting but what i will do is apologize to my poor bitches that fuck with me hey y'all listen i grew up poor there are many days where i didn't have anything to eat but tears there are many days where i, I slept on the ground slept on the floor didn't have a blanket didn't have a comforter you know what i mean i had to my friends had to buy my school lunch 
I would eat food out the trash like a raccoon, like a rabbit, like an animal, you know, just so I could eat food in general. I never had nice clothes. I was never allowed to buy nice clothes. When I played basketball, I had to wear like my older teammates hand-me-downs. So I don't want y'all to think I'm an elitist bastard because I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, guys. I'm not this evil, wicked, sinister bully that everybody wants me to be. You know, one of my life goals is to become a billionaire so I can um, build an apartment complex to house the unhoused. That's my goal. I don't. There's there's several organizations that that my card is on file at, and I donate money to less fortunate. Literally, I was out to eat with my friend Anika at um, Hamburger Heaven or something that was called. It was called like. Heavily, 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 her burger or something. And this girl, this woman came up to me. She was homeless. And she was like, <laughs> um, so like, how do you order a cheeseburger? And I was like, girl, cut the bullshit. Do you want a burger and a, and a beer? And she was like, yeah, I do. And I bought her a burger and beer and fries. Everybody at that place, she was asking everybody to buy her, buy her some food. And I, and I, everybody told her no. And that was confusing to me. Cause I'm like, she just wants a burger and a beer. You know, she, 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 just cause she's homeless. She can't have a beer. Like, goddamn, who wants to eat a burger and not have a beer to go with it? Uh, she's not, that's not a crime. But I want y'all to know that I love my supporters. And this week, I let my anger get the best of me, y'all. Like, I've been angry for like four years, man. Rightfully so. I don't feel bad about being angry. I feel bad about reacting the way that y'all have always wanted me to react. I reacted in a way that, that people have been praying for me to react. They don't want to see me happy-go-lucky and having fun and buying my friends Prada bags and taking them on trips. They don't care about none of that. They don't care about that. They care about the negativity and they care about making me angry and making me mad. You know, the things that I'm saying about the pay gap or about fat phobia or about colorism or about texturism isn't something that has been said. Jackie Ina has been talking about this shit when I was in high school. You know, plenty of fat women have been talking about this for years, but y'all didn't want to listen to them because they're fat. When we're fat, we're not heard. So I thought I was doing the right thing by being the reader and coming on here to, to defend fat people and, and defend myself and finally unleash the hell that I've been receiving for four years. And that's not what I should have done. That's not who I am. <laughs> Like all my friends are like, Nita, this isn't you. Like you're sweet. You're not, you're not like this. You're not evil. You're not mean. And I'm, and I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry for letting them get me out of character. I'm apologizing to my supporters. I'm sorry for letting them get me out of character. And I hope that y'all can accept my apology because y'all are the only people's opinions I care about. In my videos, I say I care about my friends and my family, but I also care about the people who genuinely love me. I just started Twitch streaming. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to come watch me on Twitch, I'll be over there a lot, going live, talking my shit. And if you miss my Twitch stream, you can watch it on my YouTube channel. It's Fanita the Baddest. T-H-E-E. -E. And it's Twitch and YouTube. It's Fanita the Baddest. And uh, I can't wait to cultivate a new audience on Twitch and, and have new friends on Twitch and, and really just pick up again. Because you know what I'm saying? Y'all, I'm taking over the world. We know it and we know that's why they're mad. We, we know they're mad because I'm taking over the world and I'm going to be the star that they never want to see happen. But nobody can deter me from my goals. But I'm sorry, guys. And I, I really do love all my poor girls. I love all my poor girls, all my fat girls, all my gay, all my gay girls, all my gay boys, all my non-binary people, all my trans people. I love all my unhoused people. I love all my people that are unfortunate. I love all the people of, of Gaza, Congo, Sudan, and Haiti. I love everybody. I am a philanthropist. And even I even love some of you white girls. I did not call y'all white hoes for the first time in a week. <laughs> but I do love some of y'all white girls. I just have had a lot of bad experiences with white people. And so that's why it's triggering when white people talk to me crazy. But just know I'm not, you know what I'm saying, a uh, 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 ex-grand wizard against white people. I, I, <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not a Black Panther. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I might be sometimes. Sometimes I am really passionate about the things I believe in. But for the most part... I really am just a real trill, chill ass bitch. And I'm sorry for letting them get me out of character, guys. I love you guys so much. I really do. And I hope y'all continue to support me. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitch. We're going to omakase uh taking Tanita out to get some uh get like a seven course like sushi meal oh my god that's so sexy and rich i know boss has interracial couple boss has interracial <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, it's super that, big. It looks so big. That looks, does it look super thick? Super big. Don't tell me it looks super big. It looks big. crazy. He does copy like he like his women. Black. Look, look at the waist. I'm getting pretty as fuck right now. Have you ever had sex with a black girl? Yeah, that was so good. Mmm. Mm. Mm. It's probably why he likes eating pussy so much. Because he loves sushi. <laughs> two, two inch pumps play with my tits. Dunks. That breath. Hot. I can smell the funk. Everything I do on this app is jokes. I I do not get involved in any drama. Everything is all good. Everybody, it is just a silly app, okay? The internet is not real, okay? Back to being silly all the time. Come on, come on. This is not what I do on here, okay? I love you guys. Sonita, that man is not your friend. Let's start with that. I think the fact that he can come on here and watch his so-called friend getting dragged by hundreds of thousands of people and you can't even say her name in the video. He is trying to distance himself from this situation and from her as much as possible. He is not your friend, Fanita. And at this point, I'm just talking to you directly because this is, I can't, this is actually like hurting my feelings and I'm not even involved. I think it's the former fat girl syndrome in me. Too. I mean, I'm still a fat girl, but I have former fat girl syndrome too. That shit is hard to deal with. You put yourself in spaces and situations and you can't even tell when you're not even wanted there. These people are not your friends. And it makes me really, really sad because you go, you ride, you go so hard for these people and they straight up say, I don't get involved in internet drama. You're watching this girl get beat down by hundreds of thousands of people and you can't even say her name in the video. And then you have the nerve to say the internet is not real, really. You as an influencer are getting paid real money, them real paychecks, real dollar dollar bills. So which one is it? Is the internet real or not? Fanita, these people are not your friends. And I hope that this is the situation that makes you see that. That the people who actually care about you, you're telling them to screw off and F off and all this stuff. And they're broke on Section 8. Really, they're the ones that have been supporting you because this one, they don't give a flying fuck about you. I would eat food out the trash like a raccoon, like a rabbit. I would eat food out the trash like a raccoon. Okay, okay. Like, like I said, okay, pattern behavior, all right? That's what I said, and you know what I mean? I don't know. If I say anything, I want people to understand this is confirmation, okay? Because I've been saying it. I've been saying it. You can talk about all that other stuff you want to at the root, at the root. You're going to find a coonery. It's coonery, coonery behavior, okay? So listen, when I be saying stuff, I promise you, it's not coming just, I'm not just pulling out of my ass. I promise you promise you that okay so this is just further confirmation of what i said that if you pattern behavior coon in the backyard doing stuff right coon's gonna get the trash and stuff like that you get used to that type of behavior you could predict that the coon gonna go he's, 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 kibbles and bits okay the kibbles and fucking bits i told y'all this shit okay get at the root of the issue root of the issue is coonery and coonery is just self-hate and it has nothing to do with weight it has to do with the black okay it's the black where are the friends? Where is the friends? Where is the team? I don't understand. Like, when I mean friends, I mean the black friends, not the white friends. Because this does sound like a white girl apology. Either this is marketing genius, because at the end of the day, it's going to stay trending. You know what I mean? Modern day, it don't matter if it's positive or negative, as long as people pay attention. But at the end of the day, this is confirmation of what I say, what I say all the time. That a lot of shit is just rooted in coonery. She just confirmed. That it's, this is not a new type of behavior. She's been eating out of trash cans since way back like a raccoon. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> I'm going to give my two cents and do a whole girl talk about this whole Fanita situation. Fanita, she came online and she said she hates her viewers. She hates us. Fanita, you don't hate us. You hate yourself. Let's clock it. I'm somebody who's dealt with body image issues my whole entire life. I'm somebody who was also bullied my whole entire school experience. What people say to you, especially when you're in your earlier years of development, when you're finding out what self-confidence is for the first time, when you're finding out who you are for the first time, what people say to you can permanently scar you deeply. And people who weren't bullied will, will never know this pain. When you're a young girl and you're in an environment where everybody around you is telling you that there's something wrong with you, that you're too big, that you're less than the other girls around you because of your size, that you will not find love and boys are not attracted to you because of your size, that you comparing you to like an animal saying you look like this, you look like that because of your size, it damages you. It does. 
and I come in here and I talk about self-love all the time because I literally had to fight tooth and nail to love myself. So when you grow up and people are always telling you that there's something wrong with you, in your mind, you think that if you can fix the one thing that people say about you, you will feel better about yourself and all that damage will be undone because you finally have fixed what everyone has been telling you to fix. But as we can see, I want to tell you guys something too, is like if you're dealing with this, external validation will not fix how you feel about yourself on the inside. It won't. When you grew up internally damaged, feeling like you were less than, feeling like you were ugly, feeling like there is something wrong with you, feeling like you're not beautiful, feeling like you're not enough, even if you fix whatever people said about you externally, it will not fix the internal damage that has done to you. What Vanita is doing right now is she's projecting the hate that she still has for herself that she thought would go away after she got her body done and after she lost the weight and after she fixed what people around her have been telling her to fix her whole life. And for some reason, she still doesn't feel warm and cozy about herself on the inside. So now she's angry and she's dealing with emotions that are real and valid, but she's dealing with it in the wrong way. She's projecting hate now and spewing hate towards everyone around her because she never fixed the deep-rooted issues and the brokenness that the body image and the bullying, the lifelong bullying has made her feel. If you're someone watching this and you dealt with body image, you know, issues, do the internal work. Fixing yourself externally will not reverse the years of damage that you suffered internally from being bullied and from being talked down on and from having low self-esteem your whole life and not liking how you look your whole life. Fixing it externally will not fix you internally. Do the work. Anita is not having a manic episode and I wish people wouldn't use that term so lightly. I think what we're watching is a little girl who used to get bullied for things outside of her control lashing out very much and like yes people have talked about you kind of can't compare Fanita and alex world they're not the same people they don't exactly make the same content don't have the same audiences but the thing that really struck me in all of this is when she's like i hate you bitches in section eight i hate you bitches that only liked me when i was fat or made fun of me about having darker skin like i hate i hate i hate it really sounds like a little girl who did not get an environment where she was allowed to be herself and explore herself and thrive as who she is, is lashing out as an adult now. And I think that's why when she's talking about those very specific things that I think she thinks her proximity to wealth would aid in her having a proximity to whiteness in a certain type of way. Not to say she wants to be white, not to say she wants to be white, but the concept of whiteness and the concept of freedom and innocence that whiteness allows because the concept of whiteness is more rooted in systems of oppression than it is anything else. That's why when we're discussing racial ambiguity now and she's talking about colorism and texturism and featureism, those are all really real things, but they've become ever so more muddled in this day and age rather than like even 10 years ago because now the pendulum is shifting to what's desirable but that's a whole other conversation and when i look at Fanita and i look at her anger and her sadness and her frustration i really just see a little girl who just was hurt and hasn't healed and i don't think it's fair what she's saying i don't think it's fair how she's calling people out i don't think it's fair what she's doing but I can feel bad for her that she's not been able to work through all of this. And like, she's still young. She's like 23, I think. But her actions do have consequences. So I think she is going to burn bridges. I think people aren't going to come back. I think people aren't going to be as forgiving because she should have kind of learned her lesson last time referencing the tart trip and the fact that she aided in the same discrepancy uh, that she's talking about right now because Bria said hey you aren't treating me the same tart as you're treating all the other girls and I don't appreciate that tart and then Fanita and that one other older woman who was using her which still shame on her they went on that trip they're kicking ha ha and laughing up until it was really blowing back on them and instead of going on about business they doubled down on their bad takes and spent all night basically just ruining the trip 
for everyone on it, including the other black girls who probably didn't have anything to do with this. And they didn't sign up for all the drama that surrounds it. And guess what? Those girls are doing fine. Those girls are still getting brand deals. Matter of fact, I follow Bria. She's buying a house right now. Fanita is the one still left here fighting for her life. And she wants to say that it's because those girls are light skinned. And it's like, no. Every time this is brought up, the people who win in the end, which would be Alex Earl, Monet, Clark, um, Olivia's, both Olivia's, I'll tag them. Even April, who is a mutual of mine, and I'm like, she's a big, black, beautiful girl. Like, they're getting paid because they know how to handle themselves. But they've also, I think, done the work internally. Some of them have done the work internally to be able to handle this level of fame. And I'm going to say this and then I'll leave. But it is such a beautiful thing allowing yourself sometimes to work up to a certain situation yes we are recognizing systematic things that hold us back but sometimes you got to work to get to a certain place so that you can enjoy it you can prosper in it and you won't squander it and that's the thing i feel like nikita is doing and that's the thing that i feel like other people have learned not to do possibly from her but just like in general growing and maturing so no i don't think she's manic i think what it is is that she's throwing a temper tantrum honestly working through that and i hope she will get better because this is not cute and this is not marketable and if you want me to talk about that i will Fanita's rants let's talk about it the first thing i want to say is i like Fanita, but i have to be honest about what i'm seeing so this ain't nothing personal this is just what i see so this first part i'm gonna talk about is dealing with significant weight loss if you ain't never been through it then you ain't gonna fully understand but if you've ever lost a lot of weight and got to see the transition of going from really big to small and getting to see how people treat you the difference in how people treat you a lot of times for some people they don't know how to handle that and they will internalize how the difference of the treatment is and it becomes hate like it translates into them hating people for that difference in how they treated them. The fact that you could treat them less human, you could treat them less of a person because they was bigger. And then once they lose weight, all of a sudden you're nicer to them and you treat them better. They feel some kind of way about that. And I feel like that's what has happened with Fanita. I think that transition has caused her to internalize a lot of things and it has built up into becoming hate. And then not to mention the bullying that she also went through as a social media personality. Like the normal bullying that you get as a big person is one thing. You get double that when you're a social media personality, right? The heat that she even took when she made that statement about everybody not being pretty and everybody attacking her looks solely based really off her weight. Because one thing Fanita ain't is ugly. So if you want to sit there and call her unattractive at that time, it was based off her weight. And let's be for real. So for her to be able to see people go from saying that she was unattractive and all of these different things just because she was big to now changing up and being in her comment section and saying how attractive she is or, you know, people making over how much better they think she looked now that she lost weight. A lot of people don't take that well. They don't take that well. And I fully understand it because it's a transition I had to go through when I lost weight as well. But I didn't internalize it because I looked at it realistically. I knew that I wasn't happy when I was bigger. I knew that I looked better when I was smaller. Therefore, I didn't hold it against other people for thinking the same thing I thought. But some people don't see it that way. And I can't say that it's wrong or right, but everybody just handled the weight loss different. One thing I gave side eye to is when she said she held back saying certain things when she was bigger. I never held back nothing, no matter what my size was. You got this same mouth, no matter what my weight is, you going to get this mouth because that's who I am. My weight ain't got nothing to do with my thoughts, my morals, my integrity, my standards. My weight don't got nothing to do with that. My weight is my weight, but who I am is who I am. So you going to get Dana regardless of what that scale say. One thing she said that was absolutely correct is your messages are definitely received different depending on the size you are when you give it. The bigger you are, the easier your messages are received. People don't take you as serious. People don't really care as much about what you're saying. But once you lose weight and they actually see you as a person, and if you actually become attractive when you lose the weight, 
they feel some kind of way about the same exact stuff you might have said when you was bigger, when they didn't feel like you was a threat. They didn't really see you as anything but just this fat girl who just running her mouth. But now that you look better and you smaller, now they actually care about what's coming out of your mouth. Now they actually putting thought into it and the jokes ain't as funny as they used to be no more. The very last thing I'm going to say, I swear I'm saying this with love, but she definitely just stole some of E.K.'s personality. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Fanita. I ain't got no problem with you. Like I said, it's all love, but I got to call a spade a spade. Some of the stuff, the faces, the stuff that's coming out your mouth is absolutely giving E.K. core. That's what it's giving. I don't know sometimes if y'all watch people and y'all pick up stuff and y'all don't realize y'all picking up stuff, but you absolutely done picked up some stuff from E.K. Fanita. I wasn't going to address you or the situation, but then I realized that I'm 32 and my little sister will be turning 25. And there are people y'all age that might need to hear what I'm about to say. 32 and 25 doesn't seem like a big age difference, but y'all grew up with a completely different relationship to the internet than I did. And if years 22 to 25 of my life were permanently etched online, if my frontal lobe was quite literally developing in front of two and a half million people, ain't no telling what y'all would think of me right now. So I'm going to talk in two parts. First, I'm going to talk from the perspective of what I really hope this is about. You said that you don't care about anybody except for your family and close friends. Is any of them telling you to put your phone down and process your feelings? Because I think that's what you need to do. I don't care how you do it. Put your phone down and process your raw emotions somewhere else. Speaking of those raw emotions, I don't know what it's like to lose a drastic amount of weight, but I can only imagine the mind fuck that must be. To quite literally instantly have a different experience of the world around you and the only difference being your weight changed. Fanita Manning, Fanita Need Meds, have you considered that she tried that before? But the last time she tried it, she was fat and her doctors told her that she just needed to lose weight for all her problems to go away. You mentioned this in a video you deleted. I also lost my uncle. You get through it, but you never get over it. And funnily enough, I'm in Atlanta and he was in LA and a lot of stuff went down and I couldn't get to him. And having to watch his funeral over Zoom is something that will haunt me for a very long time. But in order to be responsible with the platform that I was blessed with, because I'm not entitled to it, that's going to have to haunt me offline. Because the internet is a really good place for a lot of things, but processing raw emotions is not one of them. Now I'm going to talk from the perspective of what you're saying this is about. If you're telling us that this mean-spirited cyberbully is the Fanita that you've always been and you finally get a chance to show us because you're skinny now, then from the perspective of the 32-year-old who works in digital communications and audience management, you need to know that the bitchy black girl era is over. And if I'm hating and that's not true, fine. Take clips of your behavior from these last couple of videos, put them together, give them to your manager and tell her to put them in a brand new pitch deck because that's what you're going to use to demonstrate to brands what they can expect from the new Fanita. But think about it, the mean black girls we grew up with, Omarosa, Tiffany New York Pollard, uh, the homegirl that I ain't get no sleep because of y'all. Notice how we don't see that no more because the bitchy black girl era is over. Think about Candace Owens. She's one of the meanest people with some of the worst ideas I've ever seen. But even she can't deliver them like the bitchy black girl. Why? Because the bitchy black girl era is over. But because she's still committed to the mean girl bit, she has had to develop an audience of other mean people independently so that she can still support herself financially via content creation. And again, I really hope that's not the conversation that we're having, but if it is, god damn. A cute little petty clap back every once in a while, I get that because you can only take so much. Yes, I have told people that have been harassing me for days online that they look like the dad from Ratatouille and then it was a problem. Yes, I have told podcast bros who tried to slut shame me that I can't stand when short men get money and Wi-Fi. Absolutely. But if you are going to take on the spirit of the mean girl bully as a revenge arc, you can't be mad when people don't support that. Because even though I can fully respect what made you a bully, we don't need no more bullies in this world, no matter how they came about. So that's it. I hope you hear me. But if you don't, I hope that somebody else who needs to hear me listens to what I'm saying. Since I woke up to tea about the pay gaps and the pay disparities among black creators and white creators. Unhinged rants aside, I'm really glad we're talking about this topic because I actually wrote my master's thesis on this exact problem. I'm going to read this quick blurb from it. Uh, a study conducted by communications company MSL found that creators of color made 35% less than their white counterparts. What's even more alarming is that the influencer pay gap overshadows nearly every other industry. According to the U.S. Department of Labor's 2020 population survey, traditional industries like education, construction, finance, media, sports, and entertainment have all recorded pay gaps less than 20%. Many assume that the impact of systemic racism has diminished over the years, but the widening pay gap that has developed in the influencer marketing industry proves otherwise. The other single most impactful statistic I found throughout my research too is the fact that 88% of marketers are white versus only 7% being black. So when we talk about why the influencer pay gap even exists in the first place, the most important reason is that 
marketers are choosing people that look like themselves, whether unconsciously or consciously. So this is all I got from this video. There are so many stitches to this video, calling her out to uh, pull her phone down and stop comparing herself to other people. And also, I really know that there is a, like one of her videos that I did about pay issue when it comes to black content creator and uh, people that look like me. We all understand that, that there is a payment gap, right? And a lot of people then at some point, she actually started, uh, I mean, having, calling some other black content creators and uh, also trying to make uh, problems with them, right? Which people did not find funny. A lot of people called her out on that, telling her not to do that, right? And she has been going on the runs, left, right, and all that. I really do like Fanita, right? I love her. But uh, I think there are some certain things when you become a big content creator and all of that, you really have to be smart and do not let the money you are making immediately at this point in time determine how you treat people and the rest of it. I mean, it's she's still very young. And I, I also understand that she's still very young. She's like 23, 24, not more than 25, if I am not mistaken. But at the same time, she is old enough to know some certain things and all of that. And I would, I don't think anybody have any problem with you going to shop for your friends or trying to be there for your friends and all of that. I mean, that it's okay. Buy whatever you want to buy for them, buy Prada or whatever. But I hope also you are saving money for the rainy days and all of that. And then she has been screaming about her friends, her white friends and all of that. But you all can see that all through the period she's been going, like since this week, last week to this week, she has been going back and forth with everybody on the internet, fighting, calling people out, trying to like, you know, none of her friends has ever come out to defend her to this very moment. And the one that actually came out could not even call her name and was saying that uh, this is an internet Nothing is real here and all that. So the problem your friend is having and calling people out, it's not also not real. That tells you also the kind of people you hang out. Some of them, you might mean well for them, but they do not mean well for you. That's why as a smart person, you have to also know the people that need to be around you, especially when you are making money and people that do not need to be around you. And at the same time, she really needs to be grounded on how, I mean, social media etiquette and all of that. It is not everything you respond to on the internet. There are some things you ignore and move on and all of that. There are some people, right? Because sometimes your character might chase people away because she has been calling out a lot of black comic creators and also trying to... Uh, uh, decorate uh, also her followers, which a lot of her followers are black people. They've been supporting her. They've been rooting for her for a longer time. So you don't also have to be rude. So you don't lose on both like all parts, right? So we really need to be very smart in things like they know how you talk to people, know how you follow people. And uh, yes, uh, also she needs to work. She has a lot of work to do on her own part. Because I felt like, you know, losing weight. She thought her, the problem was losing weight and all that. She lost the weight, but still, she looks like she was still also not fulfilled. She still have, like, you know, to uh, speak to herself, talk to herself, and uh, and, uh, and uh, come to conclusion that uh, there is nothing as beautiful as uh, self-love. Let me tell you something. No matter how people love you outside, and you do not care for yourself and you do not love yourself enough. That love does not matter because there is nothing as beautiful as love from within. That is the most important thing. Thank you all so much for the support. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye for now.